Today, January 15th, 2015, a dream of liberty is made real as a new nation comes into being across Canada. A new political, legal, and spiritual jurisdiction and authority that is the Republic of Kanata. Free men and women have reclaimed both their personal and their collective sovereignty through the following proclamation of the new republic, which was publicly declared and established today in dozens of cities and hamlets across Kanata. The Winnipeg Proclamation of Independence establishing the Sovereign Republic of Kanata reads as follows. We know it to be self-evident that all men and women are created equal and are endowed with an unalienable life, liberty, and sovereignty to love and protect one another, their children and the earth, free of oppression, violence, and tyranny. We know and establish that when any system of government is destructive to this condition and purpose, it is the natural right and duty of free men and women to throw off any legal, political, and mental shackles and allegiances and create among themselves just and free associations and a social order established to safeguard their sacred lives and liberties. Therefore, we, the sovereign and freeborn men and women of the land of Kanata, as the source of all authority and law, and with a solemn respect to the obligations bestowed on us by creation and by right of natural law, do hereby command this proclamation to be promulgated to all men, women, and persons who presently occupy our sovereign land. We first state as a fact beyond dispute that for centuries a predatory foreign power calling itself the Crown of England in alliance with its corporate sponsor and ally, the Church of Rome, has imposed itself as a warring occupation force on our peoples and the land. That force has raped and drained our lands of their vast wealth and vitality, waged cruel and unprovoked wars of extermination against our nations, murdered the innocent, imposed fraudulent laws and taxes, subverted our liberties, stolen and destroyed our children, and kept us in a state of colonial dependency and impoverishment. These crimes are attested not only by the continuation of these evils to the present day, but by centuries of proof of a deliberate intent by these foreign powers to falsely claim and steal the lands and lives of the original inhabitants of Kanata. These false claims were made under the genocidal doctrine of terra nullius and other concepts found within the papal bulls Romanus Pontifex and Inter Cantera, which fraudulently nullified the existence and lawful status of any non-Catholic people. This fraud continued throughout all subsequent papal and crown statutes that formed the so-called Dominion of Canada in 1867, including such genocidal laws as the Indian Act, which have murdered countless of the original people of Ganata. Since the natural liberties of all these indigenous peoples have never been lawfully ceded or extinguished, the Crown and the Vatican have habitually dishonored and violated due process of law and the law of nations, and consequently, their claims to authority and jurisdiction within the lands of Canada have no basis in law or fact. This is especially made true by the continued imposition of such fraudulent rule by means of illegitimate courts established under so-called canon and admiralty law, courts that have no lawful or binding jurisdiction in our nations. The criminal nature of these twin foreign powers is further attested by the lawful conviction in February 2013 of the Crown of England, the Vatican, the government and churches of Canada, and their top officers for crimes against humanity in a common law court of justice established on our territories under international law. As convicted criminal bodies whose heads, the Queen of England in London, the Pope in Rome, and Canada's Prime Minister Harper, are now fugitives from justice under standing citizen arrest warrants, the Crown, the Vatican, and Canadian Church and State have lost any claim whatsoever to our allegiance. Indeed, to obey or acknowledge this convicted triumvirate is to engage in a crime and to violate both the laws of God and of man. By demonstrating only bad faith and duplicity in their dealings with all of our different peoples, church and state in Canada have vitiated and nullified all treaties, laws, and agreements established under their rule. These institutions have in fact lost any right to legitimately govern or exist. They must be actively repudiated, disestablished, and replaced by all just men and women who love liberty and the rule of just law. 
Second, we state as a fact beyond dispute that the Crown, Canada, and the Vatican, along with their companies and agents, have imposed the same regime of fraud and oppression on the settler European populations who immigrated to this land, denying them the rule of law and responsible government in order to dispossess these populations of their liberties and lands. Canada has existed solely to steal the wealth of the nation for a self-governing oligarchy, an oppression that continues to the present day. Twice in our history, in 1837 and 1885, Canadian patriots under Papineau, Mackenzie, and Riel, along with their Métis and Indigenous allies, fought valiantly but unsuccessfully to unseat the oligarchs of church, crown, and high finance, and establish a self-governing republic in which every man and woman was sovereign and equal. The defeat of these patriots allowed a colonial regime to corrupt our nations and impose a regime of genocide on our peoples. We stand in the tradition of these Republican patriots and acknowledge that we are carrying to conclusion their dreams and program of an egalitarian and sovereign Republic of Kanata, serving all of its people. As heirs to an empire of conquest, Canadian church and state have consistently violated the right of jus cogens, or fundamental justice, in relation to indigenous and settler populations by deliberately instituting proven genocide, mass murder, warfare, child trafficking, enslavement, fraud and mischief, land theft, kidnapping and destruction of property and culture. These crimes violently abrogated not only the basic Magna Carta liberties of European settlers, but the treaties already in place between the Crown, the Church and Indigenous Nations, thereby violating Pacta Sunt Servanda, or the necessity to keep all agreements. This violation clearly invalidated all of those subsequent instruments that the Crown and the Vatican have relied on to legitimate their conquest and continued occupation of the lands and the lives of our peoples. Is it any wonder that this tyrannical regime has shown the same violent contempt towards the land and its creatures, despoiling them for its own profit and that of foreign corporate interests? Third, and because of these facts, we utterly reject the claim that the present form of law and government in Canada represents in any way a free society, founded and sustained as it is by fraud, tyranny, and arbitrary foreign rule. Canadian democracy is in practice a sham that employs the outward forms of freedom while denying the substance of a truly lawful and equitable society. The law in our country is a corrupt, judge-ruled system serving the selfish interests of the Crown and its corporate associates, whose greed has required such corrupting of the operation of the law, but denying just or speedy remedy and relief for the majority of Canadians. The law is, in fact, a tool in the hands of the wealthy that operates to evade and deny justice, while entangling our people in irresolvable and expensive litigation overseen by a self-governing and unaccountable judiciary. These judicial wrongs are the legacy of a clique-ridden colonialism designed to perpetrate minority rule, the same reign that continues to deny justice to indigenous people for their deliberate genocide by church and state and to enable the massive institutionalized rape and trafficking of our children. It is undeniable that by their status as the sworn agents of this criminal regime known as the Crown of England and its monarch, Canadian police officers, judges, soldiers, civil servants, and members of Parliament are all colluding in a criminal conspiracy at the behest of a convicted criminal body. As agents of what is a rogue power under international law, these public officials are obligated by their oath of allegiance to the Crown to serve a foreign criminal, not the people of Canada. As a consequence, every aspect of official Canadian society constitutes an unlawful and destructive war against our lands and liberties, and thereby is and will always remain our enemy until these criminals and agents stand down or are removed from their offices. For these undeniable reasons, there exists no institutional remedy for the warfare and oppression of inflicting our peoples, as bitter experience has proven. The cure for the sickness called Canada must be invented from the ground up, within the roots of the common law that unites and safeguards all free people. Therefore, let it be known and established 
that because of these indisputable facts, the time has now come to nullify and dissolve the crime of church and state in our land by creating a free, independent, and self-governing society on our soil. The historical moment has arrived to establish for the first time a federated republic of equals from among all of our separate nations, as men and women who freely consent to covenant and associate according to common law and due process. That sovereign republic is Ganata. In this purpose, we acknowledge that all free and sovereign people must dwell within a community that safeguards the well-being and liberty of each of its members, and not according to class or special privilege. We therefore proclaim that all of the lands and the waters and their wealth within our republic are not the property of any individu individual or group, but belong equally to all of the people, and are held in common by the people as a visible sign that the natural law of peace and equality is honored and safeguarded. To overcome the crippling legacy of genocide and colonialism, and to re-establish the original equality between our original and settler nations, the Republic welcomes all indigenous nations that choose to do so to federate with Kanata as equal partners. They will be represented in a chamber of indigenous nations within the National Congress elected every two years by the people of Kanata. And to legally establish and safeguard the Republic, we the people hereby establish a High Court of Justice to embody and adjudicate the common law for all of our people with justice, due process, and equality. The High Court of Justice of the Republic of Kanata and the common law shall have sole jurisdiction within Canada and shall establish and maintain lower courts according to the will of the people. Upon this pronouncement, warranted by our sovereignty and right of claim as free men and women upon necessity, we the people invoke the considered judgment of the law and the blessing of our common creation by hereby proclaiming the establishment of the Sovereign Republic of Kanata under common law, which henceforth and forever has sole lawful authority over the lands and waters formerly known as the Dominion of Canada. Accordingly, by this proclamation, we hereby sever and extinguish all ties and allegiances to the Crown of England, to the British monarchy, and to the Vatican, and we nullify their authority over us and any allegiance owed to these powers. In witness thereof, we pledge our mutual lives and our sacred honor, and have hereunto set our names and caused to be established the seal of the Sovereign Republic of Kanata as a free society on the land under customary land law jurisdiction. This proclamation is effective and legally registered as of today, the 15th day of January in the year 2015, by we, representatives of the Provisional Council of the Sovereign Republic of Kanata, and by the undersend free men and women. In the name of the Provisional Council of the Republic, we are Kevin D. Annett, Paige Mason, Teresa Harrison, Karen of the Solway family, and Colin Sullivan, and 45 free men and women. Long live the Sovereign Republic of Kanata!